The following is a presentation of the Force Center podcast feed. As Obi-Wan Kenobi once said, hello there and welcome to Databank Brawl, the podcast where we learn about Star Wars characters, discuss them, share our feelings, and then make those characters fight for our amusement and yours. I am your host, my name is Joseph Scrimshaw, with me as always is Ken Knapsack. So happy to be here, sir. I think we've learned a lot recently about some of our favorite characters. Uh, in that solo review uh, a few days ago, you and I were talking about... Uh, the Officer Charest. Yeah. And the whole time I'm reading that novel uh, by Merle Lafferty, I'm thinking about our databank brawl. That's right. We we got it really close to exactly correct about the backstory, <laughs> the emotional <laughs> life of Officer Charest. And it's nice to know that, uh, you know, if people haven't heard that yeah. episode, they can go listen to a very surprising episode of databank brawl. It's you know what? very, very, uh, I'm not even going to spoil it if you no. haven't heard it. It's, I, it's a great story. It's beautiful. It's, it's like solo part two. <laughs> <laughs> My dream one day is for a writer of a Star Wars story, whether it's a comic, a novel, or a movie, to say, uh, while being interviewed uh, by Perry Nemiroff over Collider, well, why did you put that in there? Well, I listened to Data Bank Brawl. <laughs> I, I thought it was a good point. <laughs> that a gonk droid can crush a man's face by walking <laughs> on it. And I decided the world needed to know. Well, we'll just start uh, inviting uh, some of our writer friends to appear on Data Bank Brawl. <laughs> Maybe that will cue it off. Yes, we know enough. We do. You're right. We do. We'll start, we know enough. Let's we'll start getting out the old Rolodex, the yes. 21st century Rolodex called the Internet. <laughs> Uh, we also have some whiskey. We just like to keep mm-hmm. you updated because some episodes we don't, other episodes we do, and I like honesty. Yes. If we're going to be drinking, you're going to be knowing. Ooh, what, are we, what are we drinking? Uh, this is a uh, bourbon called Larceny that was actually a present from our third co-host, Jennifer Landa. Well, it just robbed my breath. <laughs> it, that was a, that is a good, strong it, drink. It is good. So Jennifer is here in a way as well. I wish <laughs> it was actually on the mic. None but. of her great voices today, <laughs> but the whiskey is here. Maybe the whiskey will inspire us to do a voice that can maybe match the great Jennifer Landa. Uh, are you ready to get into this? Yes, sir. So uh, this is, of course, the week of the home release of Solo. Uh, you should say the home video release, because otherwise it just sounds like Solo's in your home, <laughs> Han Solo, which I think most people would be I'll just fine with. I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to have some characters from the movie Solo, colon, a Star Wars story, and Databank just recently added a bunch more characters. Still not all of them, but mm. a bunch of our uh, favorite weirdos did get added. So our first combatant, is, are you ready for this? Mm. Sagwa. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Featured in the novel quite uh, prominently. Here's what yeah. the databank says. Once a mighty Wookiee from the inland tree city of Roacraro, Sagwa was <laughs> imprisoned and enslaved on Kessel after a failed attempt to defend his people from imperial occupation. Years of toil inside the spice mines have taken a devastating toll on Sagwa's body. His fur yeah. coat is dotted with balding patches, an outward sign of malnutrition, yeah. Yeah. and the untreated illnesses he's endured, but the struggle has not dampened his spirit. <laughs> when the brave Chewbacca comes to the rescue, Sagwa is prepared to help guide their people to safety and charter a ship home. Uh... First of all, I want to file a complaint to Fandom, who runs Wikipedia. Uh, their ads have volume. You don't hear in the episode, but Joseph and I do when I'm scrolling. <laughs> so sometimes we hear his pause go, hey. it's because their uh, uh, Gillette ad is playing. <laughs> Stop it, Fandom. Well, Stop it. At least that's appropriate that on Sagwa's page, a <laughs> Gillette ad is uh, playing. Yes. That's some good programming, yes. Fandom. Uh, and sometimes we get treated to a video by Alex Damon from Star Wars Explained, right? Now, that's okay. That's, he's just guesting on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, and he does our video uh, inter- uh, you know, opening uh, graphics for the <laughs> YouTube version of the show. Yeah, uh, but that's the, the picture of Sagwa uh, you heard. There's a lot about his, his balding patches uh, from mal- malnourishment yeah. and untreated illnesses. That's very, very sad. Very <laughs> sad. Uh, so... What do you got on uh, Wikipedia? Stats-wise, uh, species is a Wookiee. Did you know that? <laughs> I um, did. Homework is chic, but they do list this planet, as you said. Uh, how do you? I'm going to try to say it now because you you had to say Rawukmoro, Rawukmoro, Rook Rawukmoro. It is. It is totally the sound of Scooby Doo choking on a joint. Rawukmoro. R W O O K R R O R R O. 
Row, rock, roar, roar, roar. Row, roar, rock, roar. I'm Tell sure we'll uh, work it into the episode as many times. It's an yeah. inland tree city. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that one. Um, but other than that, stat-wise, not a lot there for Sagwa. Oh, there's not his height? No, nope. no. Nope. Yeah. We haven't got that far. The solo novel goes to a lot of uh, work to describe him as balding, but then when you see him in his movie, it's his face. His face is balding. He has face baldness. He's got face baldness. If only, Poor guy. If only that was an option for me. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, but I like that. Now, it's not... The reason I'm kind of pausing here is I'm looking through this here. There's a lot of a lot of times there's some behind the scenes stuff. It's not listed on Wikipedia, so I have to look for it elsewhere. I so I read and maybe I imagined it. Maybe uh, Sinbad played Shazam. <laughs> um, I thought he was designed. There was an, a Macquarie design. Yeah. So did you hear that as well? And that's maybe what put Sagwa. He is. A, he does have a different appearance, and people obviously commented in a, after seeing Solo. Yeah. What's up with that Wookie? It looks different. Um, well, this Wookie was uh, an homage to a Macquarie design, and yeah. I'm not finding that here, so maybe that's not fact, and I'm an idiot. I honestly can't yeah. remember if I heard it somewhere because I know I thought it in the theater because I thought like, mm-hmm. oh, I feel like I've seen that, and I know that they have yeah. done so much work to uh, mine mm-hmm. earlier design work by Macquarie. Yeah, so that's so I enjoy that uh, in the book. We get a little bit more of an answer. Oh, about his his, yeah. fa- his so, face uh, baldness. Shut up, all y'all who criticizing <laughs> my boy Sagwa. <laughs> he has a face illness. Yeah. All right. So there's no further adventures. He just uh, has uh, this adventure in solo. Uh, no, I do have a quote. Oh, nice. It's not from him. It's from Tak, who I believe is Anthony Daniels' yes. character. Sagwa, this way. <laughs> Sagwa is not uh, good with directions. He's directionally <laughs> challenged. That's a good thing to know. Yeah. Uh, if you need Anthony Daniels to point the way. Um, yeah, so I, I'd like the detail in the solo novel that he really says to Chewbacca, mm. no, come this way. We're going to get a ship. We're going to go back to yeah. Kashyyyk, and we are going to take out some Imperials. So you know that Sagwa is uh, roaring for a fight. Yeah. Good way to say it. Roaring for a fight. There's a shirt for you there, kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and again, I like, uh, yeah, well, I, I don't know. You, you let me know when I can give my impression. <laughs> oh, please, please give your, there's not much more to talk about. We so, went through his stats. What are your feelings? Sometimes when I have too much larceny, I start <laughs> uh, uh, Boagart in the show here. No, I, I really do like Sogwin. I like learning more about him in the solo novel. I thought this is an older Wookiee that even, you know, Chewbacca could look up to in a way, yeah. even though he hadn't met them before, connected by uh, who they are as Wookiees and, and enslaved, and, and Chewie was enslaved as well at one point. Obviously, Han helps him break out. So it, it had some uh, uh, an emotional undercurrent to it that, that was present in the movie for me. Yeah. But I think it's even stronger in the in the novel. Yeah. You know, in the novel, too, there is that, that implication that uh, Wookiees living longer... Mm-hmm. have this better sense of community in mm-hmm. that any Wookiee is a family member. Yes. Like, obviously, you have your family. You have your, your Itchy, your Lumpy, and your Malatobuk. Yeah. But <laughs> you also have, like, this sense of kinship, this strong, strong sense yeah. of kinship. And I feel like that's part of what Sagwa's character is and why that goodbye is tender. It's very tender, which it, which we know a little bit more now is a, is, is a specific Wookiee way of forehead to forehead <laughs> is like you meant something to me yeah you know you're we're connected in a way yeah and i like it and it would make sense because at this point in the galaxy and uh, at this point in the story the wookies are not enjoying a good life on kashik they no. are spread throughout the galaxy uh enslaved by the empire and, and enslaved by criminal underworlds and syndicates and everything and they they would immediately have a kinship it makes sense yeah yeah and I also like for myself seeing an injured Wookiee, uh, not like literally <laughs> cut, but like okay. yeah. the because it's the mighty Chewbacca. You yes. don't want to mess with a Wookiee. You want a Wookiee on your everything's yeah. like they are the biggest, they're the strongest, they're the best. Which of course they are. They're great. Uh, so it's fun to see one who is having a hard time, who does have face baldness and untreated <laughs> illnesses. Nice, that's nice and mysterious. I just love that. I, I, you know, and working with you over these years and, and knowing you as a friend, it's like you're, you're one of the most thoughtful, 
thoughtful people I know and intelligent people I know, but also, you know, your favorite band's Guns N' Roses, which, <laughs> not that they're not thoughtful or intelligent, but it's just it's two sides of you. So to hear you go, I like injured Wookiees. <laughs> I just went a different direction when, when you were going to go. Uh, it's just, it, it, he's staying strong despite <laughs> yeah, that, his that pain. Makes sense. His <laughs> pain. But no, it's cool. It's yeah. cool to see a Wookiee having a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. Proves that everybody can have a hard time, yeah. even and a mighty one. And it proves that you, sir, are multifaceted. I am sometimes <laughs> just an asshole, yes. Yeah. And sometimes I even like some Guns N' Roses songs that other people mm. do not. Oh, Spaghetti Incident, indeed. I love the Spaghetti Incident. It's a great <laughs> album. I can get way off topic there, but we, we won't go down that road. Love it. Yeah. Human Being, great song, great cover. Anyway, on we go. Matt Sorum does this great thing <laughs> with the floor tom that's very inventive. Anyway, <laughs> love it. We are going to move on to our next combatant to face Sagwa. This is a dream combatant. This is one that I have been waiting and waiting to be added to the databank. It is Therm Scissor Punch. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was so excited. I literally squealed when I uh, saw this. I mean, wow. Yeah, right? Now is the time. Yeah. Here is the databank description. With a sharpened shank implemented in one claw in an overall fearsome appearance, Therm is reputed for intimidating his opponents during games of Sabak. In reality, he's a mediocre card player who insists on being addressed by his full name, although it's unclear if it's a nickname he's been given or part of a prestige he's hoping to create around himself. There, there's a lot. This is a Finally. juicy, funny comedy character, mm-hmm. but he also has a knife in his claw. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the what's funny to me is this, you know, databank brawl. We're in episode one twenty one. Jesus, it's been almost uh, you know well, two years. I mean, yeah, at least. Sure. Yeah. Um, and uh, the moment this character hit the scene with that Denny's thing, which by the way, you and I were there for. Yes, yes. We had the reveal. We were there for the reveal. Um, <laughs> People have been waiting for this moment. This is a lot of pressure. <laughs> this is a lot of pressure. Yeah. Well, I feel like, you know, if it was just Therm Scissor Punch, what are we going to do? But, you know, one of the great things of Databank is that we do take some cues from what is actually in the StarWars.com databank. What does Lucasfilm actually say about these right. characters? He's got a shank right. implanted in a claw. He insists on people calling him Therm Scissor Punch, and people are kind of rolling their eyes because they think, like, probably not your name you, you probably just think that sounds real badass right. which is a really fun and cool take on this character i see you got him up on wikipedia there. yeah so you there's got not some a, stats anything not a lot but i just as uh, you what you noticed you saw me uh make a little face so there's all the things we would know uh what you things you just described and you know in 10 uh bby before the battle of yavin so punch was at the gambling table next to the famous smuggler land of real scene blah, 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 all the things that would explain his appearance in solo star wars story on vandor one then there's this line sometime after the battle of yavin mm-hmm. scissor punch asked Sa panoza and his partner to acquire coaxium for his boss well i know that name saponza saponza whatever He is canon. He is part of the Star Wars Commander tablet game that I used to play, uh, but stopped two years. In truth be told, my my iPad iPad finally gave up the ghost, (laughs) and I didn't have the game on my phone, and I just was like, I'm enough. I'm not going to play that game. So he, in an updated version of Star Wars Commander, uh, (laughs) Scissor Punch is part of the game. Now I might have to play the game again. That is so awesome. I really, really like that. Oh, wow. Uh, (laughs) Does he have a quote at all? Um, no quote. No so we quote? get to make up no his voice quote? and oh, words. Yeah. Uh, let's let's make an effort to physically describe him because there is a yeah. lot going on. So uh, yeah, go for is, it. So we got this. So we, we were at the Denny's event, which was on April 2nd, 2018. Do you I mean, just remember that or is that in his no. Wikipedia? It's, uh, oh, I, I, it's in his Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> I do have a weird memory for dates, but um, we were there. Now, Joseph and I were lucky to go. We got to go cover this press event. Our friends from the Black Series Rebels were there. It was a lot of fun. We got to eat those solo pancakes on the El Capitan Theater. But I, the, the, the trading cards were unveiled, and yeah. that's where the name Therm Sister Punch was. Joseph, I was right next to Joseph Scrimshaw when I saw him stir at the wonderful name <laughs> up on the screen. The card, I have the card. Scissor Punch, I remember that day, was like, I thought he was more of a little alien. But then oh, the movie comes wow, out, yeah. he is a hulking creature. He's taken up space, very tall, hunched back, lobster-like claws, the almost Poggle the lesser-like 
face, but more even more insectoid. Yeah, big bulbous glassy big black eyes. Bulb, a lot of bulbous things going on here. <laughs> and these little tentacle, creepy little, almost they look like spider legs, but they're tentacles hanging from his mouth area? The question yeah, was. maybe there's a mouth under yeah. there. Yeah, and then he's got this kind of like leather drapey cape. Uh, yeah. Looks like he maybe raided one of those Ikea leather couches to make. <laughs> <laughs> mine. He might have taken it from mine. Might have been. He's got yeah. some sort of like thermometer uh, hanging there. Some sort of device. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's so cool. He looks like a giant crab hunched over walking uh he looks a little like wilford brimley there's a lot of things going <laughs> on a lot of going on but he yeah. does look right on that line between scary and funny like if you saw this yes. character in a dark alley you would be wanting to laugh and scream at yeah. the same time right and if his and if his name was you know if we if we if he run into him in that star wars alley on coruscant and his, <laughs> and his name was you know Baz, uh, you know, kills a lot. You'd be like, no, yeah, but okay. then you're like, oh, Therm Scissor Punch. Scissor Punch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you point a finger and laugh at him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think it probably goes without saying that I like this character. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, to flesh out what you're saying about, about yeah. seeing his reveal at Denny's, it was, a, it was such a cool moment because it was in the middle of this presentation about Denny's is going to have a, a solo meal, and they just threw up pictures of the cards. Yeah. And in the background, one of the cards was this utterly outrageous name. Like, Elon Slezbegano level outrageous. It wasn't a yeah. highlight, you know, it wasn't like Pablo Hidalgo, who I'm sure came up with this name. Right. Uh, most likely, given given what we know of how all that works. Yeah. It's not like it was a reveal of like, look what I did. It yes. was very subtly in the background of a promotion for Denny's <laughs> and all of these people who, this small group of people, 30 max, yeah. mostly Star Wars podcasters or journalists, all just sort of quietly zeroing in on like, I understand you're telling us about pancakes, you're telling us about cards for charity, but all that the people in this room are seeing is that one dumb name. And then like it explodes out immediately. Yeah. Imme- like by the time I drove home, <laughs> it was out. you know, people had tweeted about it and the whole yeah. Star Wars fan community was like, Therm, Scissor Punch, yeah. what? And the cult of Scissor Punch began. <laughs> the cult yeah, I of believe Scissor I saw Punch began. Jermaine Lucier of IO9 writing yes. in his feverishly in his notebook. <laughs> and and, and, and the, like the CEO guy of Denny's was like up there, you know, he's a nice enough guy. We met him afterwards. Just like John Dillon. Jo- giving a great presentation in his head, he's probably thinking, they're really leaning forward and reacting <laughs> to the, the, the reactor pancakes. All of us in that room were like, Therm Scissor Punch, Therm Scissor Punch, Therm Scissor Punch, Scissor Punch. We're just here for Scissor Punch. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, I think he's, he's, he's great in the Denny's commercial. He's yes. great in the, in the movie. But this added detail mm. that the name, as dumb as it is, has some logic. Mm. If he has a shank, possibly from a scissor, implanted in his claw, th- is he trying to imply, I, it's like a part of a scissor, I will punch you with it. Ooh. I am Scissor Punch. My name is a threat. My name is a threat. A specific threat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love that. It's powerful. I love that. It's like his name is like Tentacle Choke. Like, <laughs> it's terrifying. A classic Star Wars name indeed. <laughs> How do you feel about Therm Scissor Punch? Any negativity or just no. joy in your heart? Joy in my heart. I, at this point, this far along, 40 plus years of Star Wars, we are used to Star Wars names. And Luke Skywalker might be the weirdest of all the names. <laughs> like, let's face it, right? Han Solo. All right, now we know the reason. I'm telling you, even as a kid, I was like, his name is Solo, and he's really an individual? Who's he's a like, loner? He's like, okay. Um, Chewbacca might have been the name I accepted the most as a kid, you know? <laughs> so uh, I, I like Star Wars, weird Star Wars names, and there's an immediate affinity now where maybe... In Revenge, if, if Therm Scissor Punch was in Revenge of the Sith, people would have been like, God, oh, we just had Elon Slezbegano, George, stop it. There's some Clone Wars characters that have some some bad names. Uh, this one, though, uh, this we're so used to this. It was I, I have a lot of affinity for this name, this character. Disappointed we didn't hear him speak in the movie or... You know, not that I wanted a big plot point with Therm Scissor Punch, <laughs> but he was just he was just there. You know? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, I I feel like this is a decent matchup up because we like both these characters. Didn't want to have somebody that you just wanted Therm Scissor Punch to murder immediately. Mm-hmm. We want a nice, good challenge. So with that, uh, in the words of uh, Admiral Radis himself, I say we fight. So 
Mm. We always like to begin these fights with uh, kind of a time and a place. We like to have them happen before either the characters died blissfully. Neither of these characters are, have died yet. So if we yeah. wanted to be brutal and kill Sakwa or <laughs> Therm Scissor Punch, we could. We could. Well, obviously, I think uh, a good place to start is after the events of Solo. We have both of them alive. We know Sagwa's got some freedom. Yeah. We believe he's taken a ship and maybe gone off uh, to do some liberating. Uh, maybe he's done that. Maybe he's in the middle of that. I don't know. So I like it after, but maybe not before Battle of Yavin. Yeah. Uh, oh, but, oh, but we do know Scissor Punch is alive. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. Do you want to go mm. even farther? Mm. No, I like it uh, fairly relatively recent because I like that Sagwa has this mission to free Wookiees. Like that. So maybe may, maybe Sagwa hasn't made it to uh, Kashyyyk yet. Or, yeah, I mean, maybe mm. he has... They got a ship off of Kessel. Okay. They go, uh, they go someplace and they run into some other, you know, maybe people they want to hire as bounty hunters. I like that. I think they run into each other on Sullust. Ooh, Sullust. Sullust we learned a lot from. Uh, actually, in the first Battlefront game, the, the 2015 version, we know, uh, all right, Nine Numb and the Celestians are from there, right? But, yeah, yeah, um, the Solestans, yeah. Solestans is probably a proper non-Larceny uh, <laughs> whiskey way to say it. Um, but we also know that during this time, like on Corellia, the, the Empire's moved in there. And they're building things, and, th- and there's probably some coaxium there. There's probably things along the way that maybe Sog was trying to uh, get resources for his mission. Maybe there's some Wookiees there. Maybe there's some kind of liberation before he Kashyyyk. Okay. And that maybe Scissor Punch is there as well. Yeah, right. It's kind of a, a, a harsh uh, land that's m- that we mostly see industrial, right? Mm-hmm. Because we go there in the Battlefront Two main story as well, right? You do as well. Yeah, with, that's right. With, with Lando, Lando and, and Shriv. Shriv. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I like this. Maybe there's a a little out, a uh, little uh, uh, town, mm-hmm. like, kind of a ways out from one of the Imperial outposts, but yep. a little dangerously close. Yep. That's where the uh, the shuttle they get off of Kessel happens to be going. Mm. So Sagwa uh, splits off from a couple other Wookiees and is like, you you check out uh, the Imperial Outpost. You watch it from that outcropping there. Mm-hmm. See if you see any Wookiees. I'm going to head into this bar and yeah. see, A, if I can get any medicine for my untreated illnesses <laughs> and if there are any bounty hunters around. Yes, because they maybe want to hire another ship, hire their services. We'll, we'll find out. Yeah. But he walks into the bar. He walks into the bar, and I think who he sees immediately is the strange, hulking figure of Therm Scissor Punch as Therm drives his shank from his claw into a table full of cards and flips it in rage that he has just lost a game. Lost a game of of Sabak. Again, he's not a great player. No, no. Uses his... Weaponry is intimidation, but it doesn't yeah. always work. And I think he yells Carabast. <laughs> but what the the question of the hour, what he sounds like. Carabast. <laughs> Do you think he's got some, uh, definitely some uh, Wilford Brimley uh, <laughs> breath job. issues? Yeah. <laughs> Carabast. <laughs> and, uh, and the other players are angry. And I think that he says, I'm done being a card player. Now I'm a bounty hunter. So he's just decided to be in cards. that moment. Yeah. He's he's sick of people laugh at him because he sucks at cards. Yeah, he wants to be intimidating. I think not only does he insist that other people say his full name, I think he refers to himself in the third person. So oh. I think he he turns. He's like, let it, let it be known across the galaxy. So says Bunch, <laughs> bounty hunter. Turn pleasure punches with a lot of things. But a bounty hunter most of all. <laughs> and this is music to Sagwa's ears, oh, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm, I've historically been really bad at Wookiee that was good. voices, but we're going to roll with it here. That was good. It had a slight yeah. uh, like feeling of illness. Like, there, 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 was, there was like a, a sadness to it of like, I'm hurting. <laughs> Fair enough. I think he has throat worms. Yes. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, so Sagwa is basically saying in yeah, in, uh, yeah. in Wookie, like I'm interested in hiring a bounty hunter. The, another big question: Does yeah. Therm Scissor Punch understand uh, the the uh, uh, Shirok? Oh yeah, Shirok. Yeah, I think he has a basic understanding. He's traveled the galaxy a lot. He's played a, a lot of card games against a lot of people. I don't assume Wookies are are great at Sabak. Um, Sabak. 
<laughs> um, Sabic. Um, but I think at some point he's played with, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe an old Wookiee or something, you know? So yeah. I think he understands enough. Okay, yeah. So I think Therm puts both of his claws in the air. He's like, brah! Yes. That, that wasn't even a word. He was just... <laughs> <laughs> he's just saying, like, ba- yeah. basically, take me, take me. Yes. And uh, even his claws. That's right. Uh, and I think that uh, Sagwa walks up mm-hmm. to Therm, mm-hmm. and I think he... Uh, he roars that basically. <laughs> and I think what he's saying is, uh, I can't pay you anything now yeah. because I just escaped from prison and I have nothing. But if you help me attack this Imperial facility, I'll pay you something eventually. Nice. And I think this immediately offends Therm Scissor Punch. Maybe it's even that he doesn't understand the language enough that he just hears uh, specific words like no pay, attack, yes. good enough. Yes. And just, oh, it's it's hurting. Hurting Therm Scissor Punch's uh, mm-hmm. uh, feelings. I think the rest of the bar is laughing at the idea that Therm mm-hmm. Scissor Punch is a bounty hunter. Right. Like, people are just throwing out jokes, you know, yeah. just like mad, like, you couldn't catch water on Camino, And they're like... <laughs> They're just what do you mocking think him. you are, Dengar? <laughs> uh, well, try putting more shanks in your claws, <laughs> idiot. Uh, in Therm, it's just his his uh, actual mm. tentacles change color. Oh, I like that wrinkle. They start becoming like a, a ruby red out of embarrassment mm-hmm. and shame. And yeah. in that moment, he makes perhaps the questionable choice to prove his worth by attacking a Wookiee. Yes. I think he says something along the lines of like, no one disrespects so good punch. You'll pay with your life. And I think he lashes out mm-hmm. with his shank claw. Does he connect? He slices Sagwa's uh, left arm. Oh no! Like, but Sagwa moves. He's you know, he's a little older, but he's just he's also just been through the emotional journey of uh, freedom yeah. again. Everything, and he's he's got his mind is on. Uh, freeing uh, Wookiees maybe here on Sullust, on Kashyyyk. So he's a little slow, but he ducks out of the way, and then the arm comes across. I, are we saying it's the right claw of Sister Punch? Sure, yeah. Sure. Shink. And Wookiee blood is now oh, spilled. Oh, it spills. Okay. It's pouring out onto that fur. Yeah, I think it pours out on the fur. The fur is so damaged. As soon as the Wookiee blood makes contact, mm. hair starts falling out. Just more and more hair. It's just like this disturbing, like, uh, you yeah. know, I don't know if you've ever been to or been to or been involved in a show that has uh, lots of sequins and feather boas, and it's just suddenly just a mess everywhere. Yes. This is, uh, this is like that. I've attended some of those <laughs> um, in Vegas, um, uh, in alleys. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, um, there's a mess, this fur, the ha- I mean, this poor Wookiee. Yeah. Scissor Punch steps back. And kind of looks around. I was like, pump with a with a great shot." He's just very <laughs> happy about himself. And I think Sagwa strikes back. Oh, immediately we, he grabs him by the tentacles. Oh, nice! The We're bright going, red shame tentacles. We are going right the for face it. tentacles and whips him. <laughs> it's all Scissor Punch can say. He whips him over his shoulders, and Scissor Punch lands. And this is a big creature. Lands on the bar, ooh, bounces off. The bartender's ducking. No tossing, no tossing. <laughs> um, drinks are everywhere. Yeah. Bottles broken. Yeah. Yeah. Not and, good. Yeah. And I, Sagwa is a, a, a little weak, but he just learned on Kessel. Even if you're weak, if you get, if you have the strength of a Wookiee and get hold of a weapon, mm. you're unstoppable. Because once they started to get... Mm-hmm. Those uh, weapon staffs from the uh, the Pike Sentinels oh, yeah. that started to turn things around, right? Yeah. So I think he grabs uh, from a bounty hunter right next to him a, uh, a vibro cutlass, as we discovered uh-huh. exists. Yeah. Basically, a, a big sword thing. Yeah. Uh, and he goes running. Therm Scissor Punch tries to kind of is beginning to stand up, and uh, suddenly, <laughs> shunk. The entire bar is sliced into oh, right, the center, yeah. by a furious cutlass blow. Yeah. The, the bar is just, just it crumbles. It crumbles. It falls apart. It's, it's a, a cutlass, bar. a laser cutlass yeah. with the fury of an 
illness rattled, riddled yeah. Wookie. This is ma- the bar is uh, uh, you know akin to a Waffle House uh, <laughs> counter. Uh, it falls apart. <laughs> yeah, uh, Scissor Punch falls to the ground. Um, stunned. He's stunned. He's stunned. Right? Yeah, and I can't imagine like a like a crab in real life flipped over in his back. Have you ever been like tide pool uh, walking? You see a crab, you might you feel bad. You might want to flip it over. So he gets some legs. His legs are like digging in. He's like in the air. He's on his back. He can't. <laughs> he's trying to rock over. But knowing that if that, knowing that if he can't, he might die. You know, he's in a bad spot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying trying to turn over. Yeah. So I think as he's trying to turn over, I think Sagwa comes again with the cutlass. <sighs> And boom, the claws go up. Oh, the claw comes out and catches the the metal part of the cutlass. I know there's probably a vibro blade yeah, that would, yeah, that would yeah. do damage, but maybe towards the base of the hands. Boom, catches it. Yeah, like Jamie Lannister with a golden hand catching the sword on, <laughs> on, on uh, Dorn in Dorn. Bunk, and the whole bar goes. Ooh, Ooh maybe Therm Scissor Punch is someone to respect. Yeah. And I think, in fact, <laughs> yeah, go. Therm Scissor Punch does. Thumbs and launch. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> and he twists, <laughs> right? He twists so strong, but Sagwa's grip is tight that he basically flips yeah. Sagwa through the air. Sagwa smashes not just into a wall, hmm. but through a supporting pillar and a big chunk of the bar, the whole structure just oh, starts wow. falling. Now people are like screaming. They're in fear of their lives. One of the smart asses at the uh, Sabak table just got, uh, Rodian just got their head caved in by debris from the bar. This suddenly got real. The bar is coming apart. I envision that scene in Hot Fuzz with the uh, the reporter gets <laughs> his head smashed in. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Also... One of the uh, one of the um, uh, uh, one of the creatures there playing the game steals the money that slipped <laughs> left on the table. Oh, it's a Chadra fan. Grabs uh, Chad- it and, and he's <laughs> running with it. Little little uh, I like that. Little nasty bat fellow. Yeah, like, little I'm bat- taking this money and going. <laughs> Not a Paul Simon lyric. Little bat face girl. Little uh, little bat face. Little guy. nasty bat fellow. Yeah, um, runs up and he scattered scatters over the money. So now this bars and shambles. Sc- scissor punch. Uh, let's reset the picture a little bit. Are they both on their feet at this point? No, yeah, where I we're think, going? I think uh, he's, uh, in the debris of the this uh, falling apart bar, I think Sagwa struggles to his feet. I think Therm Scissor Punch gets up. I think uh, maybe just dramatically tosses the oh, cutlass yeah. aside. Uh, it hits another Rodian. It's another Rodian. <laughs> 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 that was Dito, and then Rito got hit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think... Uh, I think Scissor Punch then uh, grabs a, a bottle of space whiskey, does the old <laughs> breaks it in, in two. Now he's, we're like at an old West fight. He's all about sharp things. I think he the is. question here now is like, what's going on in Sago's mind? We know that Therm Scissor Punch wants to prove himself. Sago is happy to get here, happy yeah. to be on his mission, and he the first thing he encounters is it some idiot who's trying to prove something by taking down a Wookiee. Mm-hmm. And I think. Maybe Sagwe even hears some people, uh, the the ones who aren't dead or panicking, mumbling <laughs> about his face. Like, why does why does that have any hair in his? Why did why did all this, the hair fall off his arm just from one little cut? Is What's wrong? With, is he even a real Wookiee? Wookie? Yeah. Is that an old Wookiee? I've never seen such a set. You normally hear Wookiees described as mighty, but yeah. this one's weak. I met a weakly. I met a Wookiee named Tarful once, and he was much better than oh, this. Oh yeah, yeah, big braids, lots of stuff in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can <laughs> th- th- this hair couldn't be braided. He's hearing yeah. all that, and I think suddenly yeah. Sagwe feels. He has he he proves he needs to prove that he still is yeah. a mighty Wookiee, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's almost like uh, he's past I think middle age as a Wookiee. Yeah, but it's kind of that thing where he's like, no, 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 I I, I am still I still got it. Yeah, I still got it. So I think he lets out the best he can a mighty roar, <laughs> and I think a worm shoots out from his throat. <laughs> And hits Thurm in the eye. Hits Thurm in the eye. I like that. <laughs> and uh, Sagwa didn't even ne- know to do that, didn't mean to do that, mm-hmm. but sometimes your weakness is mm-hmm. a strength. Uh, and I think... to be lucky. Uh, I think Thurm, without even thinking about it, brings his claw to his eye and accidentally stabs himself oh, with no. the bottle in the eye. Oh, no. <laughs> True story. <laughs> I, not a bottle, but I was in second grade. I did that in my eye with a pencil. Really? Went to scratch my eye. And I, <laughs> you uh, jabbed yourself jabbed in the eye with the pencil. The 
And that's why you have that glass eye. Uh, yeah. I still am having phantom pains now. True story. <laughs> it was bad. Um, so um, does it take the eye out though? Is it is it a is it a very painful no. cornea scratch or is it it's, he doesn't have an eye anymore? It's uh, I think he he's his eye is swollen shut. Mm. Um, yeah, his eye is swollen shut. I'm literally having phantom pains thinking about the moment. It's like <laughs> great. It was so painful. Um, yeah, so he, he he's effectively he has no sight in that eye right now, but I think the eyeball is still there. Um, to not scar little Kenny in second grade, um, and um, uh, it's swollen shut. It's pain. Yeah. it's like yeah, it's blood's coming. It's not. Therm's already not a pretty fellow. Yeah, now he's yeah. got some problems. <laughs> he's got some problems, and I think Sagwa presses the advantage. Right, mm-hmm. he yes. wants to prove that he's still a mighty Wookie. What are Wookies known for? Pulling limbs out. Right, mm-hmm. so Sagwa he doesn't normally go for the whole limb thing. But he Not knows style, that that's what everybody expects out of a Wookiee. Right. So I think he's... And I think he goes and just puts all of his weight into it, grabs uh, the one of the limbs, uh, the, the arm, the mm-hmm. shank arm. So the right arm. The right arm okay. of Therm Scissor Punch. Yeah. Question of the day. Mm-hmm. He's weak. Yeah. He is still a Wookiee. Does he have the strength to fully pull out Therm Scissor Punch's arm? My gut says yes. My gut says yes, but there's but. So, there's something as you mentioned it because I immediately was going to think, oh, this is great. He's got his arm. There's something data bank brawl like <laughs> that the arm doesn't fully come out. He's just <laughs> succeeding in separating the shoulder of Therm Scissor <laughs> Punch, which is somehow more disgusting and painful than just ripping the arm off in full. I don't know. Yeah, so, I don't know, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> column A, column B. I don't know which one. I, I'm all for this. I think he grabs Therm Scissor Punch's arm. He yeah. pulls. There's a crunk, crunk, oh, and people are like, oh, oh, oh God. Uh, and Sagwa thinks that he's really accomplished something. He yes. he, he turns and he roars. <laughs> Another worm dribbles out. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then he's shocked because Therm Scissor Punch is just standing there. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we we don't know. Right now, uh, unless it was in the in Wikipedia or in some mm-hmm. mobile video game, we don't know what species Therm is, do we? Uh, I he he is. In, I don't know in terms of species. Let me get that he's, up. He's a he's a oh, lob, yeah, yeah. he's a lobster dude. Nephron, a nephron. Fair enough. Nephrons nephron. are super duper double jointed. I like it. So basically, it sounded really painful. It sounded really gross. Oh yeah, but. He's just got more flexibility of movement now. Right. So, in fact, Therm almost General Grievous like uh, adjusts all of his limbs. Suddenly, he's in this aggressive, he used to be hunched over. Now he's in this aggressive fighting stance, legs splayed wide, popping out from under that uh, leather, IKEA leather couch <laughs> jacket coat thing he wears. Yeah. Other limb held high. Not unlike a crab at a tide pole if it's not on its back. Yeah, like yeah. you think you pulled my legs out, which people yeah. love to do to crabs. Yeah. Watch this. You're a five year old poking <laughs> me with a stick. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. limbs come out. Yeah. And he starts doing an aggressive little dance like yes. a crab does. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call this the scissor punch jig. The scissor punch jig. And uh, Sagwa is maybe for the first time. A little frightened of yes. like, I haven't uh, fought one of these beings before. I don't know what yeah. I'm in for. And I think yeah. Therm goes for an aggressive attack. Yeah. What does he do? He scampers right at him um, and uh, is able to uh, puncture Sagwa's chest. Ooh, just with the shank. He, he goes yes. straight for the shank. It's like he was jousting. Oh, wow. <laughs> Says the hurt Wookie. Oh no! Uh, is does it embedded? It's not embedded. Uh, Scissor punch pulls the knife out. Okay, but it's definitely a. We got a puncture wound. Okay. Yeah, we got a bleeder. Yeah, and I think uh, Sagwa's in pain. Uh, he's suffering, but he also uh, wants people to know that Wookies aren't just about savagery. Mm-hmm. They're also military leaders. They have tactics. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, they can use brute force, but. It's mighty in a larger sense. Right. I think he even roars that. <laughs> I am Wookiee, hear me roar. We are mighty in many senses. Yeah. And uh, he sees what is truly vulnerable yeah. about Therm is his weird jacket coat thing. 
Uh, so instead of grabbing a limb, which can clearly take the punishment, yeah. he grabs Therm by the front uh, of his couch coat mm-hmm. thing and just starts spinning, spinning, Ooh. spinning, spinning, I building like momentum, that. building momentum with a mighty mm-hmm. roar as mighty as he can muster. He throws him into the other side of the bar through the other support pillars, mm-hmm. smash up through the roof and yeah. out. Yes. Into some Celestian lava, which <laughs> will take your hit points off oh, in yeah. Battlefront. Yeah. Oh, yes, it will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't can't stay go, in it. You can't go near that. Yeah. And don't on the Kessel level, yeah. no. Yeah, Kessel as well. So I think the entire bar falls apart now. Like in a Buster Keaton movie, mm. it falls apart. The remaining structure from the outside... <laughs> So people watching from afar, the Wookiees, the Imperial base, suddenly see that far bar out there in the outskirts mm. just fall open. Yeah. Like an unboxing video. Like, <laughs> like a wonderful <laughs> unboxing video. Hey, guys, we're here to unbox a loot crate. A bar. A loot crate bar yeah. full of Star Wars scum and villainy. Mm-hmm. Now, Therm landed in some lava that's not too far away. Mm-mm. And I think he gets up. He's burning He's Burn, in gets him. pain, and he's skittering, skittering to yeah. Sagwa. Sagwa's running out of the mess of the bar. Yeah. These titans are about to clash again, and I feel like this is a good place to pause yes. in our combat, as we always do, and decide who we think would win this fight, who we think deserves the, the fight, who we want to win. What, what are you feeling? There is a chance in my brain that, that Scissor Punch could win. I think he's more at top-notch health and speed and peak of his powers, all yeah. that kind of fighting stuff. Sagwa is over the hill. He's got that uh, untreated illness. Um, Multiple. Uh, and he's also been out of the game. He's just yeah. been out of the game. He hasn't been fighting. He's got one fight under his belt here, leaving Kessel, right? But uh, And he was great. Clearly was great. I, I trust him <laughs> in a fight. Um, but here's, I just, how can you look at that face? You ever look at a cute puppy dog? And oh, yeah. Look, look at that face. How can you look at Sagwa and think you want that creature to lose anything? Right. That's tough for me to overcome. It's tough. So you're we're leaning looking, towards Sagwa? Lean towards Sagwa. I look at Scissor Punch and I go, don't worry, I've got some spray for that. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. I feel like Therm did a good job. He proved what he came here mm-hmm. to prove in this moment is that he is a terrible card player. Yeah. But he can hold his own in a fight. He held his own against a Wookiee. Maybe some mm-hmm. songs will be written about this. But ultimately, he can't defeat a mighty Wookiee. He cannot. Age can be a weakness, but it can also be a strength. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. think that we we should tell the story of Sagwa using not only the might of his strength, but the might of his wisdom right. to just take Therm apart. Not maybe physically, literally. <laughs> Yeah, we tried that. But mm-hmm. to truly put Therm down Ooh, yeah, for the sorry. count. Uh, I got so excited I hit the zoom. Um, yes. <sighs> Do you have a, is there a stirring in your imagination? There is. Yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of. But that's maybe the ending here. Uh, um, I I think Sagwa walks over to Therm. Now, Therm was in the lava, but he got out. Yeah, he right? struggled, struggled out. And they're, out. they're running towards each other. Very dry, towards each very other. cinematic. Oh, I like that. I like yeah. that. I like that. <laughs> so here's what maybe this is what Sagwa does. As he's about to collide with Scissor Punch, Sagwa does a stop, drop, and roll move and goes out of the way, forcing. So Scissor Punch runs past him. It's almost <laughs> like putting the brakes on a speeder bike. Yeah. Sagwa comes up behind him. Puts him in a headlock as best he can. Yeah. It's hard to find purchase, but this is a tall Wookiee. And he's got Sagwa, uh, he's got Scissor Punch in his, in his control. Uh, the, 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 even with the double joint in this, oh, he, he can't. can't, can't he's trying, he's he can't. trying, he's trying. And I think Sagwa at this point is the upper hand. And yeah. I think if he wanted to, he knows he could snap Scissor Punch's neck. Yeah. And Scissor Punch knows it too. Yeah. And the three people still around are watching going, he could snap your neck. <laughs> yeah. And I think Therm does the thing he shouldn't. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm putting his pipe. I got this. Therm, Therm, Therm. Uh, and he's yelling about himself. He's, yeah. he's talking. He's talking so much. And Sagwa in that moment realizes that what Therm needs to lose is not his life, 
but his pride. He needs to be mm-hmm. put in his place. And he roars this. And he's like, <laughs> and Thurman understands, uh, time pride lose. <laughs> Sagwa reaches up to his already balding face. Right. He grabs a huge patch of his own fur Ooh. from his chin. He rips it off. This huge patch. Yeah. Uh, just that, a yeah. big chunk. Yeah. And he reaches fiercely. Mm-hmm. With determination under those face tentacles to wherever Therm's mouth is, because he certainly got one, and he just jams his fur oh. into Therm's throat, so <laughs> Therm cannot <laughs> breathe. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then, I think, much like uh, Chewy tenderly patting Han oh, in that yeah. prison, yes, under Jabba's uh, control. <laughs> and to make another illusion on on uh, 24, Jack Bauer would put people in sleeper moves, and yes. then he would say, shh, shh, shh don't fight it. Don't fight it. <laughs> and I think that's what Sogwa does <laughs> to Therm. He totally cuts off his ability to breathe between the arm choke, the hair in the mouth. Right. And he's like... And Scissor Punch slowly loses consciousness? Yeah, mm. and he's just mm. laid out, splayed on the cruel ground of Solist. Right. And now, I think Sagwa has that choice of, like, I could just kill him. Yeah. I could just kill him. Yeah. But that's not what he wants. No. He wanted to prove that he, Sagwa, is mighty. Yeah. But there is still hope. We still need to work together in this galaxy. Uh, yeah, we must come together and overcome uh, oppression and evil uh, and and our differences. And there's differences between Sagwa and Therm Scissor Punch, but they uh, they still, like you said, the galaxy is big and wide with many uh, a danger. So I think Sagwa waits a little bit and then uh, kind of kicks Scissor Punch. And slaps him slaps a little bit, him. yeah. Tugs on his tentacles. Tug, yeah. <laughs> Little little nub, you know, this little tap with the foot until he wakes up. And then I think Sagwa says, your payment was your life. You still have it. No, no. <laughs> payment, life, have still. Now you work me. And I think uh, Therm understands that enough is like, gave life, keep life, bounty hunt me now. No argument. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. And I think he says, Some scissor punch on sale. <laughs> and they, uh, uh, Sagwa helps him to his feet. Yeah. And they head off toward uh, uh, the distance, towards the horizon where the other uh, Wookiees are waiting, yeah. building this army of resistance. And I think uh, Sagwa roars to Therm Scissor Punch, <laughs> uh, which is also. By the way, do you happen to have any pills for my diseases? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Scissor Punch doesn't yet, but he knows a guy. <laughs> that might be part two of the adventure. Yes. And so uh, this the scene fades out. Now, can you also often have ideas for mm. uh, yeah. post-credit scenes? Do you have a post-credit thought on where this... Uh, this these budding friends go on their adventures. Um, yeah, I do think at one point um, uh, they they succeed on Solus. They do infiltrate this Imperial uh, facility. They release some Wookiee slaves. Uh, it's a good time. And then they get into the <laughs> ship uh, and they head and, and Sagwa says, <laughs> and Thurman says, says yeah, have, have, have medicine, have medicine. And so, uh, they fly to Maz's castle. Ah. To where uh, Maz has a guy there, a, a creature, a medicine man who can help Sagwa. And in conversation, Sagwa tells of his adventures and tells Maz of uh, his interactions with a Wookiee on Kessel. And Maz says, that sounds so familiar to me. I think I've met him. And I think I love him. <laughs> and that is the end for Sagwa and a beginning of a beautiful career. As therm, for Therm Scissor Punch, the bounty hunter, if Darth Vader had had money for one more bounty hunter mm-hmm. to track down Han Solo in The Empire Strikes Back, it would have been Therm Scissor Punch. It's a good bounty hunter, but not the best. <laughs> <laughs> 
we learn so much about our characters that we know and love and their strange uh, diseases and uh, joints. <laughs> so much to learn, always. Uh. Thank you for uh, joining me on this uh, particular adventure, Ken. Yeah, this one makes me want to go play Battlefront. <laughs> I was laughing to myself. I was like wondering, what if like instead of Thurm Scissor Punch, uh, Zuckus was in Solo? Would people oh, have enjoyed yeah. that as much as Therm? I don't nah, know. Nah, nah, Therm. I'm, I'm glad Therm's here. Yeah, and I'm glad we know he's a bounty hunter now, and I hope to read a book where suddenly that is proven true. Yeah. Anyway, as always, thank you uh, for listening. If there's characters that you want to see fight, let us know. Use the hashtag databank brawl. Ken, where can people find you and your adventures? Yeah, you can find me at Ken Knapsack across all social media platforms, including YouTube for my motivations Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That is awesome. Uh, we are building to trying to get some more reviews on iTunes, Apple Podcasts. We are building to 500 ratings and reviews. When we hit that goal, we'll do a special episode of Databank Brawl featuring major Star Wars characters. I know, characters more major than Thurm Scissor Punch. How could it be? Find out. Leave us those reviews and ratings. We always like to thank Tony Thaxton for our theme music. You can check out his Patreon at patreon.com slash Cloud City Soundtrack. You can check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Force Center. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram is at Joseph Scrimshaw and check out my albums, podcasts, and shows on my website at josephscrimshaw.com. You can, of course, like Force Center on Facebook and follow us on Twitter is at Force Center Pod. And until next time, as Luke Skywalker once said, while no one was really listening, I care. That's it for Databank Brawl.